Hi guys, this is Mehul Mehta and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's podcast, we have Rohit Jain. Rohit just graduated from Masters in Financial Mathematics uh, from North Carolina State University. Before joining Masters, he did his Bachelor's in Economics, which was a four-year degree. And also he did a, a minor in Data Sciences. So I welcome you, Rohit, on this podcast um thank you mehul for having me uh, it's great knowing you and happy to help everyone out there who's looking for answers that we're going to address today right so in this video i i specifically wanted to talk to you about the job search uh, because uh, like i just wanted to understand how was your job search so i have prepared few questions regarding that you know i'll i'll ask you one by one and whatever you feel like uh, you know because uh, this podcast you know a lot of content aspirants and a lot of freshers will be also listening so in any way you can help them so sure sure okay so the first question is what do you think is the job market how tough is it to crack a con job um so being pretty blunt honest i would say job market right now is it's, it's not that easy to be honest um because uh, because of the current situation that is happening in US, firms are evaluating their strategies. Hence, some you know hiring freezes in companies. Um, suppose in Morgan Stanley, as far as I know, city is restructuring, so it gets pretty difficult uh, to get a good job in a top company. So yeah, right now it's pretty difficult. But if you apply, uh, like if you work hard on your applications, your resume is good. You'll be getting interviews. So. Uh, it, the situation is harder than it gets, but uh, opportunities are still out there. Right. So, so when you were applying for, you know, all those different organizations, were you targeting any specific role like con trader, con researcher, con analyst, or was it a mix of it? Or like, what were what were you targeting? So my main preference uh, in order to get a job was to uh, pursue a role in risk modeling as such. But since the job market was not that good, I was open to get a job in any field, say, suppose in quant research, be it risk modeling, be it as a quant analyst, even as a data scientist, I was I was very happy to get a job as, as soon as possible in any field because, uh, yeah, I just don't want to say idle. So, yeah. Right. So basically, you were applying to all the jobs that were there in the market. Yep. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. So, you know, uh, I just wanted to understand because during your master's, you might have studied a lot of different subjects and a lot of different topics. So which all subjects and topics did you think were very helpful in your quantitative interview? Okay, so uh, when I talk about quant specific interviews, uh, a lot of people, a lot of interviews were more interested towards the options and derivatives pricing, as well as more towards the fixed income side. They were more interested in how does the yield curve work. They wanted to know the basic understanding of how swaps work. Uh, how does the, uh, what is the difference between yield curve, forward rates and the swap curve, which is pretty crucial. And when I go uh, deep into the option side, they're more interested towards the assumptions of the black holes, how black holes work, the basics of Greeks, what value does the Greeks value uh, delta go or a gamma go? How does it changes among themselves? So that is what interviewers are more, more interested in the quant side. But when I talk about the risk side, they are initially more interested towards your modeling senses. How do you model things? What are the basic steps in the modeling? Uh, how much of knowledge do you possess in terms of machine learning, be it logistic regression, be it towards the tree side, because that is the most uh, one of the most used machine learning uh, methods. Uh, and also towards a deep focus towards the logistic regression side. So yeah. in talking in terms of uh, regression, yeah, those are the main topics that they would like to test upon and general modeling sense. When do you clean the data? How do you clean the data? Which is pretty crucial for them as well. Right. Okay. So there are two subjects which are little intimidating, like the Monte Carlo methods and stochastic calculus. And, you know, a lot of freshers, when they come into the field of quanti uh, quant, they feel, you know, they are not able to understand anything in these two fields. Uh, I just wanted to understand, were you asked any interview questions based on Monte Carlo and stochastic calculus? Um, they were not, they were not extensive as of such, because um, um, it might vary from role to role. 
but for the roles that I got, they did ask basic questions about Monte Carlo simulations in the sense that if you have a, a uniform distribution, how will you get a normal distribution or the basics of uh, variance reduction methods that we have in Monte Carlo simulations. And in some of the interviews, they were also interested uh, towards the stochastic calculus side where, you know, they discussed or they wanted to know more about the Martingales and the Eto's process. Just the basics of it. But uh, like I understand, but they did they also dive into very deep or it was just uh, on the surface level? It was just on the surface level. So all the basics question, basic questions that you will cover, you know, while you're studying Martingale, suppose if a particular process uh, for is a Martingale or not, some standard question like uh, omega square t minus t, is it a Martingale or not? So, something on that lines. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Understood. So like, I understand that you were also getting different interviews and quant and risk. I just wanted to understand like what kind of projects did you did during your master's or like what kind of projects you had in your resume, which helped you getting more and more interviews. Okay. So, uh, I was like, as I, as I, as I discussed earlier, like I was more interested towards the risk modeling sites. So I yeah. tried to make sure that my resume had a lot of modeling projects since um, I do not have any uh, corporate work experience. I do have internships and an RA, which also focuses on the mod modeling side. So I just wanted to make sure that I do have the ample amount of experience in the side of risk modeling. So my resume did consisted of loss given default modeling, a bit of probability of default with the applications of explainable AI and machine learning in it. And uh, when I was hunting for my internships, I did look over a few of the firms that were more interested towards the climate risk side as well. So I tried to make sure that I did a project on climate risk as well, so as to stay in the stay with the trend. And apart from this, I did a summer project on uh, model to uh, monthly model to model VIX. So that was again an interesting model uh, to work upon because VIX is something that uh, it, it can be easily modeled upon, pretty difficult to predict. So that was a nice experience to have. And we also performed stress testing in that. And apart from this, we, I also included Monte Carlo simulations because again, it's a, it's a nice uh, nice thing to show on your resume. So I understood like uh, from credit risk, you had PD and LGD from like you had, you had another project from climate risk and one project on market risk wherein you did your uh, mod modeling of volatility and then you stress test your models, uh, right? So, okay. So right. basically you had all your all your uh, projects towards uh, aligned towards risk, okay? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, I also wanted to know, you know, what were some of the biggest challenges you encountered during your master's program? Like, you know, because uh, you were fresh out of college, right? When you, you came fresh uh, out of your undergraduate. So like what, what all, uh, because of course, quantitative finance in itself, you know, it's a very revolving field and, you know, there are a lot of models that are coming out daily and stuff like that. So like, how, do, what, like, what are some of the challenges you faced? So the biggest challenge or the biggest, um, myth that I had when I joined master's program at NC State was quant finance uh, is it's it's more of a difficult side to master upon it's it's pretty it's a it's a high paying job but you have to go through a lot uh, in order to get that since I have zero experience I had zero experience in quant finance or anything related to that prior to joining NC State uh, I was more worried towards uh, whether like I'll be able to make it or not but someone out there who you know who was also thinking the same question when he got an accept acceptance from a quant finance program whether he'll be he'll be able to make it or not I would say you'll be able to make it pretty good it's a pretty good pretty good masters um, I know everything's gonna be new for you it's a change of scenario change of uh, fields for you but uh it's it's pretty interesting if you have a little bit of interest in this area you might be able you'll be you'll be doing very good actually uh, in this field be it options pricing based monte carlo simulations those are new subjects uh, new topics new new concepts to learn about it's nothing difficult it seems pretty difficult from the outside when you but when you touch up on it you study um, you know it it seems pretty easy to you know understand and go about it in interviews so that might be the biggest challenge is to, you know, learn about the new things, adapt new challenges, come to U United States, uh, you know, apply uh, change in scenarios. You know, I've, I've been always uh, never, never got out of uh, corp, never got out into corporate world. So it was a pretty big challenge for me as well. 
to go and adapt to United States, US curriculum as well, and then look for a job. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just had a follow-up question on this. Um, so basically, I understand you you might have applied to a lot of jobs. Is there any number? Like how many jobs did you apply? Um, I didn't keep up you count, just... but as, as far as I know, I think it's about 800 for the past two or three months. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. That is interesting. So, okay. Um, I, I'm just curious, you know, what all programming languages did you learn and like uh, also like uh, i wanted to understand from you from the job perspective like in any of your interviews uh did the interviewer ask you to so solve programming challenges um so as far as my experience in programming languages go so uh, since i have an economics background um i have a strong foundation in r right from my bachelor's degree because economics utilizes a lot of r so R is something that I've learned. Uh, C, which is a pretty basic language. Python is something which has been pretty pretty heavily used in current world, be it in your um, projects, be it in corporate world. So Python is something that I've learned. And MATLAB is another programming language that I've learned throughout the Monte Carlo simulations course, because it is something which is, uh, MATLAB is very useful in Ma uh, Monte Carlo simulations. So it, it comes in handy in that. And, um, Yes, I've been asked programming questions uh, in my interview, but they were not, they didn't ask me to code as such, but they wanted to test upon my uh, Python skills. Say so suppose they'll, they'll give you an easy code, say so suppose of 10 lines of code and they'll ask you to, uh, is there any error or, you know, they'll ask you to predict the output or they'll, they'll try, they'll ask you to debug it just to check whether you know Python or not. So, um... Okay, I understood. Okay, thank you. Thank you for answering this question. I have like one more question, you know, a few more questions and uh, we are almost at the end of the podcast. Like, um, so what strategies did you find most effective while you were searched, you know, while you were searching for jobs? Um, so I can, I can talk about my strategy. So right. uh, like the strategy or the feedbacks that I got from my peers, so one of the top thing was to, you know, do not delay uh, applying for a job. So if a job is coming out, if a job is posted out one hour ago, you know, you, it might be a good good time to apply. Just, just, just you know, be on your toes. Look, look for the applications or look for the new jobs, you know, twice or thrice a day probably because, uh, you know, it's, it's more of a fastest finger first. Uh, if someone is looking to hire urgently, they might, you know, close their applications or close their application pool uh, within a day just to you know gather gather those applicants because they know that if someone is interested in their role or in their company they might be applying or they might be on their toes so even though the application portal is open uh, they might have moved few of the applicants in the next round so that is something that i would suggest or um, i would i would ask everyone to do is to be on their toes apply regularly and as much as they can and I personally used a combination of LinkedIn, Indeed, GetWork.com, as well as there's a um, uh, there's this resource which has been provided by NC State Career Shift. I used the combination of all these five, all these four, and the last one and the biggest one is ChatGPT. So what I did was I did uh, enter a prompt of give me uh, at least fifty top credit lending companies in United States. And I asked them to, and I asked ChatGPT, ChatGPT to, you know, get this, give me 50 more, give me 50 more. So through that, I got around 300, 400 companies, which out of which I don't know half of which I didn't even knew. And right. I asked, I also asked ChatGPT to give their careers link and I went on their careers link. Um, um, it's, it's a bit of a long process, but since job market was so difficult, I made sure that I didn't want to leave any position behind for which I might be a good fit. And I manually searched upon all of the positions that have been posted on each and every row. Dude, this is like, you know, I, I never uh, saw anyone doing that. At least in my network, I never saw anyone doing that. So this is a very interesting intake using chat GPT to find careers page of different organization and going in onto that and basically searching for jobs. Wow, that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing, man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it is something that which is pretty unique because, you know, uh, not anyone knows, everyone knows that, you know, there are specific amount of companies, you know, there are endless amounts of firms. 
in credit lending, be it in finance, be it in computer science, tech. So I just wanted to make sure that no company is left behind to look for a job. So that's amazing. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, any other suggestions? Okay, so this is like the end of uh, my question questionnaire. Any other suggestions you have for uh, all the quant aspirants? Because there are a lot of people who have graduated and they have not gotten the job. Or let's say there are a lot of students who are currently pursuing their masters and they did not get an internship as of now. So like any suggestions for them? Any Anything uh, that you would recommend? Um, for someone who hasn't got their internships in, um, don't worry about it. Internships is just, it's just a part of the process. If you don't get it, make sure that you utilize that time, the time you, uh, you should, you could have been doing an internship, you know, do us good summer project, an impactful project, which might make your resume better. But in the meantime, make sure that you make your resume good enough so that, you know, you'll be full ready to apply in full force for the full time because full time is what, uh, the, it matters the most internships is fine uh, some people get get placed through internships but it's fine if you don't get it just just prepare for the full-time search and someone who hasn't gotten a job uh, till now if they've graduated it's like i'd say just hang in there keep applying everyone is supposed to get a job if not now three months two months one month maybe six months but you'll get it you'll get it uh, for sure like job market is tough but you know we are better than the uh most of the candidates out there if you work right, hard right. you'll get it yeah dude that's amazing <laughs> that is like one of the best suggestion i can you know the juniors can ever get it so i really want to thank you rohit for coming to the podcast and sharing your valuable insights so thank you again thank you mehul for having me i hope my my advice would help you all and if you ever need my help please feel free to reach out through me like on linkedin Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Rohit. Uh, have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.